Hold up, hold up. Before you go and buy that discount TV at your local big box store, let's go through some of the differences between a TV and a computer monitor. In this video, I'm gonna walk you through those primary differences and when it's okay and not okay to use a TV as a computer monitor. Welcome everybody to Apple Insider. It is Andrew here and I'm excited about this one because this is a question that I get uh, actually quite a bit as I do monitor reviews and comparisons on this channel. A lot of people will be uh, seeing a display for a certain price tag and they're like, oh, I can go get a 32 inch TV for half of that price. While that's not untrue, there's a lot of asterisks that go alongside that. See, a, a monitor and a TV, they seem really similar, right? I mean, they both can display video outputs. They both have HDMI inputs. They seem pretty comparable. And technically, you could plug in your cable box, Apple TV, PlayStation 5, or your computer into either of them, and they'll work. But even though they can do similar things, doesn't mean they're both good at both things. Take a butter knife. A butter knife is really similar to a serrated knife. They're both knives. But you wouldn't use a butter knife to slice a loaf of bread. It just wouldn't be as effective or tailored to that specific skill, even if you technically could do it. And that's how it is with TVs and monitors. They both can display that video, but they each have their benefits based on what they're primarily supposed to be used for. And sometimes it's okay to compromise on those things depending on your needs. The first thing to discuss when we compare TVs and computer monitors is going to be the size. Televisions are usually cheaper and larger than computer monitors. If you're looking at a 32 inch higher resolution computer monitor, it's definitely gonna cost more than a 32 inch TV, at least in most cases. And these cheaper prices as well as larger sizes are some of the big reasons that some people think it's better to choose a television to use as a monitor versus an actual monitor. TVs you'll usually find starting off at around 32 inches and they'll jump up from there. 32 to 40, 42, 47, uh, 50 and 55 and 60, 65, 70, the 80 inches, you can get huge TVs. Monitors on the other hand, you'll see 21 inch monitors, 24 inch monitors, uh, 27 inch monitors, 32 inch monitors. Usually we're gonna end up at around 32 for the high end of monitors, though there are of course exceptions to all of these rules. You'll find smaller televisions and you'll find larger computer monitors. If you want a very large display and you don't want to spend a lot of money, you're going to have to choose a TV. But as I talk about in a few minutes, there are some compromises you're going to have to make. If I could interject for just a moment, do you want to experience twice as fast load times in Safari on your iPhone, iPad, and Mac? Then download Magic Lasso Adblock, the ad blocker designed for you. It's easy to use, can even block YouTube ads and can double the speed at which Safari loads. Thank you to Magic Lasso for sponsoring this video. Magic Lasso is an efficient, high performance, and free ad blocker. With over 4,000 five star reviews, it is simply the best Safari ad blocker for your iPhone, iPad, and Mac. It blocks all intrusive ads, trackers, and annoyances, letting you experience a faster, cleaner, and more secure web browsing experience. And unlike some other ad blockers, Magic Lasso respects your privacy and doesn't accept payments from advertisers. The app also now blocks over 10 types of YouTube ads, including all video ads and pop-up banner ads. So join over 200,000 users and download Magic Lasso Adblock for free from the App Store or via www.magiclasso.co. As a special thank you to Apple Insider viewers, if you use the link down below in the description or pinned in the comments, you will get one month of free access to all of the app's pro features. Thank you again to Magic Lasso Adblock for sponsoring this video. Now, let's get back to our main content. That brings us to the resolutions. 
TVs and monitors have very similar resolutions and you'll see usually uh, them used interchangeably between TVs and monitors. But there are things to be aware of. So one of the most common, probably the most common, is gonna be 1080p or full HD, you'll sometimes see it referred to as, but that's your kind of typical HD monitor. It's going to be a little bit dated and many things have now moved up to 4K. A 1080p monitor will be 1920 wide pixels and 1080 pixels tall. Going to 4K, it'll be 3840 by 2160, so 3840 wide by 2160 tall. You'll also see 5K resolutions, which is 5120 by 2880. That's just slightly higher resolution than 4K. Usually you'll see TVs and monitors in 1080p and 4K. Sometimes we'll see monitors in that 5K resolution or even a 6K resolution. And TVs you'll sometimes see as high as 8K resolution, though those are gonna be for very large and very high-end television sets. One resolution you'll also see with monitors and not TVs is ultra wide. These ultra wide monitors have a 5K, 2K resolution and they're awesome for doing linear editing. So if you're editing video timelines or audio timelines or working with multiple spreadsheets at the same time, they're super useful and they have unique features like being able to pull up two computers at the same time. It's really handy depending on your workflow. Just another reason that a computer monitor can be better suited for computing versus a TV. Now that we've talked about the resolution of the televisions and how many pixels wide by how many pixels tall they are, we have to talk about pixel density, which is crucial when discussing any computer monitor or TV. So pixel density is how many pixels are packed into a certain amount of space. It's usually referred to as PPI or pixels per inch. So if you look at a display and you cut out one little square, how many pixels are in that one inch by one inch square? That's what we're looking at. You want a higher pixel density because when there are more pixels in there, the pictures will be smaller and your images will look crisper. So you can look at things like resolution, but you also have to look at pixel density. Here's an example. If you have a 32 inch monitor measured on the diagonal, and it's 1920 across by 1080 tall, a 1080p 32 inch monitor. And you also have one that's the same 1920 by 1080 resolution, but it is a smaller display, say 24 inches, that 24 inch monitor is going to look crisper because it has the same amount of pixels in a smaller space. They're more tightly packed together in smaller sizes, letting your images to look crisper and sharper in comparison. So if you have that same resolution, but in a larger display, it makes those pixels larger or farther apart, and they're more noticeable to your eye when you're looking at it. Do keep in mind though, with larger displays, typically you sit a little bit further back. So it's not terrible. If you have a monitor that's like close, like a 24 versus a 27, that 27 might be a little bit further away from you when you're looking at it, and you're not gonna notice that difference in pixel density all that much. Let's look at a few different pixel density sizes for some common monitors and sizes. If you have a 32 inch monitor and it's a 1080p display, you're gonna be looking at a pixel density of only 69 pixels per inch. Versus if you have that same size display, but instead a 4K resolution, you're gonna get up to 134 pixels per inch. It's gonna start looking a lot sharper. But if you jump in that same display, same 32 inch diagonal to a 5K resolution, now you have a pixel density of 184 pixels per inch. Apple has very high standards for its own displays. All the Apple displays count as retina resolution, which means you can't discern the individual pixels. If we're looking at the studio display, Apple has a 27 inch panel in there with 5K resolution. That gives it a pixel density of 218 pixels per inch. It's very high and images look incredibly sharp. You can also get 218 PPI on the 32 inch Apple Pro Display XDR. It's a larger display, but Apple increases the resolution to 6K, allowing to still keep that same 218 PPI pixel density. Some people definitely do not need that high of pixel density, but if you look at it all the time, or if you're doing anything that's graphical, you want that higher pixel density and better colors. Let's talk about special features for monitors. Since monitors are designed to work with computers, 
they have special features that make them better suited for that than a television. For example, a television is going to have HDMI inputs. Cool, that's what your set-top box and everything else uses to connect. But your computer may not have HDMI. That's why monitors will have things like USB-C, Thunderbolt, or DisplayPort as alternative inputs to connect your machine. On top of that, the USB-C and Thunderbolt ports can deliver power to your Mac. Over this PD spec, this power delivery spec, you can deliver almost up to 100 watts of power to your laptop and charge it while you're using the monitor at the same time without the need for any additional power cables. USB-C or Thunderbolt can also allow your monitor to act as a hub. So you can have additional downstream USB-C or Thunderbolt ports on the monitor itself. So you can connect flash drives, keyboards, uh, hard drives, whatever else it is to your monitor instead of having to fumble around for your computer, whether it's a desktop or a laptop. You may have other ports as well, such as headphone outputs. If you have your television, there's not necessarily going to be a headphone output on there. So if you do need to use wired headphones, you might not be able to do it when using a TV. Other features of monitors usually include higher pixel densities because you're closer to the screen and it needs to look crisp and sharp for documents and everything versus sitting on a couch far away from your television set. You'll have curved panels, which can be easier viewing, especially if you have those ultra wide displays. Curved panels are really handy. There'll be higher refresh rates, which is ideal for gaming, sometimes all up to 240 hertz. Others will see it around 120 hertz, but definitely higher than many TVs are. And they'll have built-in cameras, so you can take a FaceTime call or a Zoom call just using the built-in camera in your monitor versus having to have a dedicated camera connected and perched somewhere else. A lot of this sounds like I'm bashing using TVs as monitors, and that's not entirely the case. For most purposes, a monitor is better suited to use as a monitor for your computer. But there are times when a television can make sense. If you do want something larger, you have to really look at TVs. Just find one that matches the needs that you need. For example, this is a great LG model. It's an OLED panel, so it's got really deep blacks and the colors look amazing. It's a decent price at 1100 bucks for about a 48 inch TV. Uh, and it's still a 4K resolution. This is a pretty solid option when looking at a TV. You lose a lot of the other features like USB hubs and power delivery and a camera and all that stuff, but if you want the larger size, the TV is what makes sense. You can also get monitors that can double as TVs. For example, the Samsung M8 is one of my favorites. It has a full smart TV built in, including AirPlay 2 support to cast up video from your iPhone or your iPad. It's an incredible monitor, but it also doubles as a full-fledged smart TV, and it's designed for that from the get-go. So you have the benefits of a smart TV and the benefits of an actual monitor. So really, it all will depend on what you're doing, but I just wanted everyone to be aware of the big pros and cons when choosing to use a TV as a monitor versus a dedicated monitor. If you'd like to grab any of the things that I talked about in this video, the M8, the LG, or any of these other TVs that I would recommend as a monitor. There's some links and deals down below in the description. Otherwise, let me know your thoughts. Would you use a TV as a monitor? Let me know in the comments or on Twitter at Andrew underscore OSU. And stay tuned because I have a lot more videos coming your way.